we will also have to fine tune the fuzzy logic algorithm at the moment it's not doing very great it's always uh, detecting every waveform as uh, abnormal so generating only hits and false alarms and the score goes uh, negative so we'll need to modify the membership functions and the fuzzy logic rules uh, can you give an overview and uh, suggest specific code changes on the topic of dating the membership functions and the fuzzy rules can we go over each membership function and each rule let's get to it to adjust all these uh, parameters so if you were a ecg specialist how would you adjust the membership functions and the fuzzy rules okay we do not currently have easy access to a cardiologist or any other ecg specialist so we will have to fine tune the parameters ourselves now i'm sharing a couple of images of how the waveforms uh, look like uh, can you rewrite the fuzzy logic analysis function we've updated the membership functions and fuzzy rules include all the comments as to what changes were made so go over each uh, membership function and each fuzzy rule so we have uh, quite a few rules we have a default rule then rules one to six and uh, rule for abnormal intervals okay it doesn't want to generate anymore it just gave up on me why did you give up on me i have to go over them in the same way we reload the page can we continue generating uh, the same um, analysis uh, we've suggested changes for all the rules i have to go over these membership functions again so we have amplitude haven't changed that six one haven't changed that so i don't know why it even generated that code considering there were no changes made get rid of it now amplitude we have low medium and high let's go and call it normal that's that's actually a better name but then it will start uh, complaining so we'll take the yeah the problem with the current amplitude is that the uh, oh it's really became slow because we're like at minus 150 uh, points and the points go uh, low it becomes uh, much slower yeah ideally we would not be looking at the signals that we have eventually we want to add much more as well but the problem with the amplitude so we don't want to end up like fine-tuning each uh, parameter we don't want uh, essentially to use the uh, magic numbers we might change the name to medium comment that out for a sec and see essentially how good of a cardiologist a gpt4 can be so we have positive peaks dated positive peaks just make sure that the names are the same we have too few normal too many yeah two three peaks can be normal accounting for p and t more than three peaks might be unnormal one positive peak is typical um okay so the thing is it later also important like uh, once we go over the rules it uh, makes a huge difference because we're essentially giving a weight for each uh, situation a big sharpness there is a sharpness it's also change the values we keep them between zero and one and this one might be a bit uh, finicky so the yeah, sharper ones are more typical broad range for normal a peak sharpness very sharp peaks may indicate abnormality very sharp yeah we have low normal high yeah let's try that so we have both uh, binary normal abnormal but we also have a likelihood 
which is um, abnormality is likely possible or unlikely and it's suggesting we already have that line that's not antecedent is it yeah so the range for abnormality is from 0 to 1.1 with uh, steps of 0.1 we have a rule one for normal SG considering all factors okay it's a lot I might actually keep the rules uh, proper names this one uh, looking up should positive peaks so it's saying essentially if everything is normal abnormality is unlikely okay so we actually need to make sure this is working for our data set uh, in our data set we only have uh, one uh, normal ecg type the other ones are abnormal yeah and i actually don't expect uh, it to work with the gpt4 suggestions so i'm not sure if it means it's not a great cardiologist or just in our case uh, the sample data is uh, different i'll have to yeah tweak things to suit the waveforms that we are generating so it's suggesting well, so there is like a, an edge cases of uh, a normal ecg so when it's always normal when it's clearly abnormal rule for potentially abnormal interestingly enough it's not uh, even looking at the uh, peak uh, sharpness for being potentially abnormal rule for potentially abnormality based on R peak sharpness okay so i take my comment back it actually has a separate rule uh, for R peak uh, sharpness and rule five incorporating R peak sharpness being normal what should normal positive peaks normal how is it rule five different from rule one this rule one doesn't have R peak sharpness no it does seem to be rule one has everything as the uh, and uh, operators rule five has and and then or um which can make sense but then the description is not right it's also decided to rewrite the analyze ecg function which we didn't actually ask for we even have it we have something right well currently it's in the same function i think it's uh, suggesting to split yeah because currently the fuzzy logical analysis is like way too long so it refracted it into two parts do we have a calculate membership yeah as it said it's a pseudo pseudo code so it's not quite relevant to the code we provided it's interesting breaking down what we currently have would not even work yes yeah, something broke the code too many doesn't exist so we have low medium high for amplitude we do have too few normal too many positive peaks doesn't have too many we had too many before and it used to work it's wrong isn't it didn't do a mistake yes it did no i don't trust it made a mistake there as well i think that number meant to be six instead of five because we can make it five over there well yeah that one should have been uh, labeled as normal well that's because of the noise we have like 29 positive peaks that's not right so let's reduce the noise to zero that's abnormal that's correct let's just wait for a normal that's abnormal correct 0.7 that's abnormal correct 0.6 and what do we get for a normal one and for normal we get 0.59 yeah 0.61 0.59 is the normal one yeah there's not much uh, difference between them that's the problem and we get 0.59 for another uh, abnormal anyway so that that's no good yeah i have to modify the rules quite a bit yeah and i guess an error like that means that uh, for some conditions there were like no rules uh, met, no rules were met at all even though we have a default rule so i have to check what that error is all about yeah ideally we if those rules some proper names yeah i like it wait before did we have more rules just a second ago all right yeah we do 
So we have five rows instead of the whatever the seven that we have. Uh, we are happy to try them out. We have five rules. And why do we need this analyze? Uh, ECG is not being used. It's just suggesting to split uh, the function. It can make sense because it's too long. It's the abnormality analysis. Yeah, the decision is not good. That shouldn't be a result uh, below a certain number. That's what we have the membership functions for. It doesn't tell you from which. I remember which one was it. Uh, it was this uh, medium for amplitude. Leave that for a sec. Yeah, we should have the uh, interval. What's the problem? I don't know where this error is coming from. I don't know. Uh, okay, we might, might be going in circles now. Anyway, we need to fix those the membership functions. I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay, it started uh, happening, the error started happening after changing the membership functions, after changing the positive logic analysis. Can we again go over each uh, membership function one by one? Uh, suggest the default values and then uh, we go over the fuzzy rules as well, one by one of what we currently have so if you can uh, act as a cardiologist that would be great um, so you should be agnostic to what the waveforms actually look like and uh, we want to generate general uh, membership functions and uh, activation rules for the fuzzy logic um... sure let's tackle the fuzzy logic membership functions and rules as if i were a cardiologist setting default values and rules based on general knowledge of ecg characteristics amplitude asterisk low normally ecg amplitude is not very low unless there is poor electrode contact or the patient has a low voltage ecg which is rare we will set this to cover a very small portion of the range medium this should cover the typical range for an ECG, which is what we expect in most healthy adults. High. A high amplitude might indicate ventricular hypertrophy or other conditions, so we'll set a range that captures significantly higher than normal values. Positive peaks, asterisk. Too few. In a typical ECG, there should be one R wave per cardiac cycle. If there are less, it could indicate a serious condition. Normal. One positive peak per cycle is normal, which is the R wave. Too many. More than one R wave may indicate conditions like ventricular tachycardia. Negative peaks. Too few. Negative peaks are less common and their absence might not always indicate an abnormality. Normal. Normally, we don't expect to see many negative peaks, so we'll set a conservative range. Too many. Multiple negative peaks could indicate an inverted T wave or an abnormal Q wave. R peak sharpness. Asterisk. Low. An R wave that is too broad might indicate a conduction delay. Normal. A normal R wave will have a certain sharpness that corresponds to a healthy heart's conduction speed. High. A very sharp R wave could indicate a hyperacute myocardial infarction. Rule for normal ECG, I. If the amplitude is medium, positive peaks are normal, negative peaks are normal, and R peak sharpness is normal, then the ECG is likely normal. Rule for clearly abnormal ECG, if. If amplitude is high or low, or if there are too many positive or negative peaks, then the ECG is likely abnormal. Rule for potentially abnormal ECG, if. If there are too few positive or negative peaks or the R peak sharpness is abnormal, then the ECG might be abnormal. Let's define each membership function and corresponding fuzzy rule, assuming a general understanding of ECG characteristics with our specific waveform visuals. The goal is to create a fuzzy logic system that can generalize well over typical ECG features. Amplitude, asterisk. Low, uncommon in healthy ECGs and could indicate technical issues or specific medical conditions. Medium, represents the amplitude range typically observed in a healthy population. High, significantly above the normal range, possibly indicating cardiac hypertrophy or other abnormalities. Positive peaks, e.g., R waves, asterisk. Too few, less than one positive peak might be due to a rare arrhythmia or an error in ECG recording. Normal, typically, one positive R wave per cardiac cycle is expected. Too many, more than one positive peak could indicate extra systoles or other forms of arrhythmia. Negative peaks, asterisk. Too few, may be normal as negative peaks are less common, e.g., Q waves. Normal. Typically, 0 to 1 negative peak is expected per cycle. Too many. More negative peaks can suggest ischemia or infarction. R peak sharpness. Asterisk.
Low, indicates a less sharp R wave, which could be due to a conduction delay. Normal, a sharp R wave is typical of a normal ECG. High, extremely sharp R waves could be pathological. Normal ECG rule, if, if the amplitude is medium, and both positive and negative peaks are within normal ranges, then the R wave sharpness is normal, the ECG is likely normal. Abnormal ECG rule, if, if the amplitude is very high or very low, or if there are too many positive or negative peaks, the ECG is likely abnormal. Potentially abnormal ECG rule, if, if there are too few positive or negative peaks, or if the R wave sharpness is high or low, the ECG might be abnormal. These rules and membership functions should create a balanced fuzzy logic system that can distinguish between normal and abnormal ECG patterns with reasonable accuracy. Remember, the exact range is for. We're suggesting a set of rules that can make educated guesses about the normality or potential abnormality of an ECG pattern based on a general understanding of ECG characteristics. Rule for normal ECG, rule underscore normal. If. If the amplitude is either too high or too low, or if there are too many positive or negative peaks, then we assume the ECG is likely abnormal. There are too few positive or negative peaks, or if the R peak sharpness is not normal, either too high or too low, then we consider the ECG possibly abnormal. We can certainly define additional rules if needed, especially if there are specific combinations of these features that are known to be indicative of certain conditions. However, the three rules above provide a basic structure for the fuzzy logic analysis. No, I think the P, R and R, T interval should be between 0 and 1. But uh, yes, we might want to double check that. And also for certain waveforms, I get them both as undefined. All right. If the PR and RT intervals should be between 0 and 1, then the membership functions for the PR and RT intervals need to be adjusted to reflect this range. This also means that when you get a value of undefined for these intervals, the system should handle it by assigning a default value that falls within this range. That's how you can adjust the PR underscore interval and RT underscore interval definitions and handle undefined values. In the fuzzy logic analysis function, you'll need to handle undefined values for PR and RT intervals. A common approach is to treat undefined as the midpoint of the normal range or as a neutral value. It's important to normalize the actual PR and RT interval values to be between 0 and 1 before setting them to the fuzzy control system. If the intervals are measured in seconds or any other unit, you need to find a way to convert them to a 0 to 1 scale that matches the membership functions. If an interval is undefined, you assign the default underscore normal underscore value which is a neutral value within the normal range. This way, the fuzzy system can handle all cases consistently. Let's expand the fuzzy rules to include all the variables, amplitude, positive peaks, negative peaks, R peak sharpness, PR interval, and RT interval. Integrating all these variables will make the fuzzy logic system more comprehensive and potentially more accurate in its analysis. Rule for normal ECG, if the If the amplitude is very high or very low, or there are too many positive or negative peaks, the ECG is likely abnormal. If the R peak sharpness is either too high or too low, the ECG might be abnormal. If either PR or RT interval is too short or too long, the ECG is likely abnormal. Rule for mixed indicators, combining various factors. If there are multiple indicators of abnormality, e.g., abnormal amplitude with abnormal peak counts, or abnormal intervals with abnormal peak sharpness, the ECG is likely abnormal. Let's implement these rules. These rules consider various combinations of ECG features to provide a comprehensive analysis. The rule underscore normal is designed to capture cases where all ECG features fall within the normal ranges. The other rules address different combinations of abnormalities, thereby covering a broad spectrum of potential ECG patterns. This setup should improve the ability of the system to classify ECG patterns accurately. If the PR and RT intervals should always output a number, but you're facing issues when there aren't enough peaks to calculate these intervals, we should revise the calculate underscore intervals function. This function needs to handle cases where there are not enough peaks to calculate PR and RT intervals reliably. Given that we are analyzing individual PQRS complexes and not a continuous waveform, the approach for calculating PR and RT intervals needs to account for different scenarios, like when certain peaks are missing. Handle missing peaks. If the necessary peaks for calculating PR or RT intervals are missing, calculate these intervals based on available data or default to a certain value that indicates an incomplete waveform. Fallback values. When specific peaks are not found, use fallback values that make sense in the context of an ECG analysis. For example, if the R peak is missing, we might assume a default position based on the length of the waveform. If there are two peaks, we assume there are R and T and estimate the PP. If there are fewer than two peaks, we use a default value. This approach ensures that the function always returns numerical values, preventing errors due to undefined values. Remember, these are approximations. In real-world applications, it's crucial to validate such assumptions and fallback strategies with domain experts. Wearing my virtual cardiologist hat here, 
let's dive into how this application can be a game changer in the medical field, particularly in training medical students, while also keeping an eye on necessary disclaimers. Practical understanding of ECG analysis. This tool is like a digital sandbox. It allows students to explore ECG waveforms in a controlled environment. They can input different waveforms and see how changes in peaks, intervals, and amplitude affect the fuzzy logic analysis. It's hands-on learning without the risk. Demonstrating the role of AI in medicine, the app showcases how AI can assist in medical diagnostics. It's not just about learning to read an ECG, it's about understanding how technology can augment human skills. This is crucial in an era where tech and medicine are increasingly intertwined. Developing critical thinking, by observing how the fuzzy logic rules apply to various waveforms, students learn to think critically about ECG interpretations. Get to see that diagnosis is not always black and white, sometimes, it's fuzzy, pun intended. Research and improvement, for those budding Einsteins in the medical class, this tool can be a research platform. They can experiment with different membership functions and rules, seeing firsthand how tweaks can improve or impair diagnostic accuracy. Disclaimers, not a replacement for professional advice, big flashing lights here, this tool doesn't replace a seasoned cardiologist's expertise. It's an educational aid, not a diagnostic oracle. Always consult real-life experts for clinical decisions. Approximations and assumptions. The app makes certain assumptions, like estimating missing peaks. These are educated guesses, not gospel truths. In the real world, each ECG is as unique as a fingerprint and needs human interpretation. Results may vary. The fuzzy logic is based on predefined rules and thresholds, which might not cover all the wild, wonderful variations of human heart rhythms. It's good, but it's not infallible. Constantly evolving, medicine and technology are fast-paced fields. What's cutting edge today might be old news tomorrow. This tool is a snapshot of current knowledge and technology, not the final frontier. Remember, using this tool doesn't automatically grant you the title, cardiologist. You still need to endure countless coffee-fueled nights and survive the wrath of attending physicians. This app is like training wheels for ECG analysis. It helps you stay upright, but eventually, you'll have to pedal the complex world of cardiology on your own. While the app can crunch numbers and analyze waveforms, it can't empathize with patients or laugh at your jokes, that's your job. In summary, this application is a fantastic educational tool that brings a taste of AI's potential in medicine to the classroom. It's about blending technology with traditional learning, encouraging students to think critically and creatively. Just remember, it's a stepping stone, not the entire journey. I see you've uploaded several ECG trace images with corresponding scores and analysis details, including PR and RT intervals. Here's what might be going on with the PR and RT interval calculations. PR interval calculation. The PR interval is measured from the start of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS complex. If the application is only detecting peaks and not differentiating between P waves, QRS complexes, and T waves, it might inaccurately calculate the interval. For example, if the first peak is assumed to be a P wave when it's actually part of the QRS complex, this would result in an incorrect PR interval. RT interval calculation. Similarly, the RT interval calculation requires identifying the R wave and the subsequent T wave. If the peak detection algorithm is not accurately identifying these specific waves, the RT interval will be off. Peak detection sensitivity. The algorithm might not be sensitive enough to detect all peaks, especially if they're small or if the ECG is noisy. This could lead to missing P or T waves, resulting in undefined intervals. Resolution and scaling. If the ECG data is not properly scaled to the actual time units, the intervals calculated could be inaccurate. Make sure that the data's time resolution, samples per second, matches the scaling used in interval calculation. Algorithm robustness. The algorithm might not be robust against noise or artifacts in the ECG trace. This could lead to false peaks or missed peaks, skewing the PR and RT intervals. Here are some steps to potentially improve the PR and RT interval calculations. Implement a more sophisticated peak detection algorithm that can differentiate between P waves, QRS complexes, and T waves. Increase the algorithm's sensitivity to low amplitude waves while filtering out noise. Ensure that the data scaling in terms of time is accurate. Validate the algorithm against known ECG traces with annotated P, QIS, and T waves to fine tune the detection parameters. The application's diagnostic conclusions should always be reviewed by a qualified healthcare professional, and this software should only be used as a supplementary tool, not a definitive diagnostic system. When training medical students, emphasize the importance of understanding ECG waveform anatomy and not solely relying on automated tools. Additionally, make clear that while the tool can aid in education and pattern recognition, it does not replace the expertise of a cardiologist. Let's get into it now. To address the issues with the PR and RT interval calculations, we need to ensure that the peaks detected correspond to the correct P, QIS, and T waves. The intervals are calculated only when the necessary waves are identified. The undefined output is handled correctly. Here's an approach to refine the calculation of PR and RT intervals. Based on your description, it looks like the PR and RT intervals are being normalized twice, which would indeed make the values smaller than they should be. The normalization should only occur once. It seems we're normalizing the intervals both inside the process underscore data function and again in the calculate underscore intervals function. Let's fix the code to normalize only once and ensure the intervals are properly calculated. 
I'll update the calculate underscore intervals function to only calculate the intervals without normalizing, and we'll remove the normalization step from process underscore data. This way, we prevent double normalization. Here's the corrected calculate underscore intervals and process underscore data functions. Now, process underscore data will return none for the PR and RT intervals if they can't be calculated, which is fine for the fuzzy logic analysis as long as it expects to handle none values. Let's clarify. Normalization should be performed once, but it should be done in the right place. If the PR and RT intervals are used in the fuzzy logic analysis and need to be normalized, which is typical, as you want your input variables to be in the same scale, this should be done just before they're fed into the fuzzy system. The change I suggested was to remove the normalization from the calculate underscore intervals function, because it seemed like they were being normalized again in the process underscore data function. However, if they're not normalized in process underscore data, then we should indeed keep the normalization step in calculate underscore intervals. Let's correct that. We'll calculate the PR and RT intervals in calculate underscore intervals, normalize them, and return the normalized values. The process underscore data function then just passes these values through, so it doesn't need to normalize them again. PR and RT interval calculation. The PR and RT intervals are ratios that represent time intervals in an ECG waveform. You've normalized these intervals by the length of the waveform, which is a standard approach to make the interval scale invariant. However, if you're seeing values that are too small or not making sense, it could be due to incorrect peak detection or improper handling of cases where the expected number of peaks is not found. The membership functions or the ranges for normal might not be appropriately defined. The rules may not be comprehensive or correctly prioritized to cover all normal cases effectively. There might be an issue with the inputs being provided to the fuzzy logic system, perhaps due to incorrect data processing or normalization. To correct the code and improve the algorithm's accuracy, consider the following steps. Review peak detection logic. Ensure that the peak detection is robust and can accurately identify P, Q, R, S, and T peaks in various conditions. Investigate any assumptions made, such as the order of the peaks, and consider more sophisticated ECG feature detection algorithms if necessary. Adjust membership functions. If your membership functions for normal intervals are too restrictive, they might not cover all variations of a normal ECG. Reevaluate these functions and adjust the universe of discourse and the shapes accordingly. Examine fuzzy rules. If the rules are too simplistic or not correctly weighted, the system might not differentiate between normal and abnormal effectively. You may need to add more rules or adjust the existing ones to account for a broader range of scenarios. Double check normalization. If you remove the normalization step, make sure that the raw values you're now using are appropriate for the fuzzy logic system. If normalization is necessary, it should be done consistently and correctly across all data points. Debugging. Implement a debugging mechanism to trace how the inputs are processed through the fuzzy system and which rules are being triggered for a given output. This can help identify where the system is failing. For the ECG waveforms that are misclassified, you would need to look at the values of each fuzzy variable for that waveform and see which rules are being activated. It could be that the membership functions for the normal range are not capturing the values correctly or that the rules need to be adjusted to better handle the edge cases. Without a detailed look at the exact values being fed into the fuzzy system and the logic of the rules, it's challenging to pinpoint the exact issue. However, the suggestions above should give you a structured approach to debugging and improving the system. If after these steps the problem persists, you may need to share more specifics about the misclassified cases and the logic of the fuzzy system for a deeper analysis. The abnormality score in a fuzzy logic system is determined by evaluating the input parameters against a set of fuzzy rules and then aggregating the results to produce a final score. The specific score will depend on the rules you've established and the membership functions that define the categories for each input variable. Negative peaks, 1. For each input variable, determine the degree of membership in each of the corresponding fuzzy sets. For example, if positive peaks of 3 falls mostly in normal fuzzy set, but slightly in too many set, you will have membership degrees for each of those sets. Apply the fuzzy rules to the degrees of membership. For example, if you have a rule that says, if positive peaks is normal and raw amplitude is medium, then abnormality is unlikely. You will take the minimum membership degree of the normal set for positive peaks and the medium set for raw amplitude as the strength of the rule. Combine the rule outputs according to their assigned consequent fuzzy sets for the output variable, abnormality. This is typically done using methods like max min composition or max product composition. Defuzzify the combined output fuzzy set to yield a single number. The defuzzification method often used is the centroid or center of gravity method, which finds the balance point of the output fuzzy set. For a precise abnormality score, you would follow these steps using your fuzzy logic control systems API or tool. If you need to implement this manually or in another environment, you will need to replicate the functionality of your current fuzzy logic system according to its design. The membership functions for the positive peaks in a fuzzy logic system are used to categorize the number of positive peaks in an ECG signal into linguistic terms such as too few, normal, or too many. These are usually defined using triangular or trapezoidal shapes, but other shapes like Gaussian or sigmoidal can also be used depending on the system's design. Here's how you might define triangular membership functions for positive peaks based on the universe of discourse, the range of possible values for positive peaks, which I'll assume to be between 0 and 6. In this example, we're assuming that 
too few, is defined as anywhere from 0 to 2 peaks. Normal, is defined precisely at 1 peak, but with a range that allows some flexibility, from 1 to 3 peaks. Too many, is defined as more than 2 peaks, with the range extending to the maximum expected number of peaks. The exact numbers used for these membership functions should be based on clinical data and expert knowledge. They will determine the sensitivity and specificity of the fuzzy logic system in identifying normal and abnormal ECG patterns. If more precise or nuanced categorization is needed, you can add more linguistic variables or adjust the shapes and ranges of these functions. In defining membership functions for ECG signal analysis, using Gaussian or generalized bell-shaped functions can provide a natural representation of the data. Gaussian functions are characterized by their mean and spread, while generalized bell-shaped functions are flexible and can create a variety of shapes based on their parameters. Sigmoid functions, which are often used in machine learning, could also be considered, as they smoothly map the input between 0 and 1 and are defined by their slope at a specific point. However, these functions have a mathematical complexity that might not always be suitable for real-time analysis or systems with computational limitations. Choice of membership functions should balance accuracy in representing the data with the system's ability to process the information efficiently. For detailed guidance on fuzzy membership functions, you can refer to educational resources that explain these concepts in depth. The error message you're getting indicates that there's an issue with the rule set in your fuzzy logic system not covering the input space adequately. This means that there are some combinations of input variables that are not triggering any rules, leading to an inability to calculate a crisp output. Here are a few steps to troubleshoot and potentially resolve this issue. Rule coverage. Ensure that your rules cover the entire input space. There should be at least one rule that will fire for any possible combination of inputs. Membership function overlaps. Check your membership functions for each antecedent. They should overlap to some extent to avoid gaps in the logic where no rules would fire. Default rule. Consider implementing a default rule that will fire if no other rules do. This can be a catch-all rule with less weight that provides a default action in case of sparse inputs. Rule adjustment. Adjust the existing rules to be less restrictive. If they are too specific, they might not apply to a wide enough range of input scenarios. Input validation. Validate the input values to ensure they are within the expected range. Possible that inputs are not being scaled or normalized correctly before being fed into the fuzzy logic system. System testing. Test your fuzzy system with a wide range of input values to ensure robustness and to identify any input combinations that don't trigger a rule. Debugging information. Print out which rules are firing for given inputs during testing to understand better why certain inputs are not producing a crisp output. After making these checks, if you're still facing issues, you might want to consider consulting a fuzzy logic expert who can look into your specific implementation in detail. Membership functions define how each point in the input space is mapped to a membership value between 0 and 1 for each fuzzy set. It's crucial that these functions are defined correctly to ensure the system's reliability. Short, defined with a trim from 0 to 0.30. This means any PR interval from 0 to 0.30 is considered short. Normal. Overlaps with short and long, from 0.30 to 0.99. A value around 0.66 would be considered completely normal. Long. Starts overlapping with normal around 0.66 and goes to 1. Short. Similar to PR. Defined from 0 to 0.30. Normal. Overlaps with short and long, from 0.30 to 0.99. Long. Starts overlapping with normal around 0.66 and goes to 1. Low, from 0 to 0.3. Normal, overlaps with low and high, from 0.2 to 0.8. High, starts overlapping with normal around 0.7 and goes to 1. For the positive peaks and negative peaks, the membership functions were initially defined with specific ranges that cover from 0 peaks to a maximum number, 5 for positive, 4 for negative. It's important to ensure these ranges reflect realistic counts of peaks that can occur in an ECG waveform. Low, defined from 0 to 0 0.1. Medium, a broad range from 0 0.05 to 0 0.95, covering most of the possible amplitude values. High, from 0 0.9 to 1, overlapping with medium. Now, let's move on to the rules. Rule normal, this rule states that if everything is classified as normal, the ECG is likely normal. This is a straightforward rule, but it might be too restrictive if all conditions need to be normal for it to fire. Rule abnormal amplitude peaks. This rule says that if the amplitude is too high or low, or if there are too many peaks, the ECG is likely abnormal. This seems to make sense, as extreme values in these categories often indicate abnormalities. Rule potential abnormal sharpness. If the R-peak sharpness is too high or too low, it indicates a possible abnormality. This is a good rule, assuming that extreme sharpness values are uncommon. Rule abnormal intervals. This focuses on the lengths of PR and RT intervals, marking the ECG as likely abnormal if they're too short or too long. It's crucial that these are set correctly according to clinical standards. Rule mixed indicators. This rule appears to catch mixed signals from the inputs. If there are conflicting indicators from different inputs, it marks the ECG as likely abnormal. However, this rule could be too complex, leading to potential issues if it's trying to cover too much. 
It's important that these rules are not contradicting each other and that they cover all possible scenarios. Each input should have a path through the rules that leads to an output, avoiding the situation where no rules are triggered. All right, to adjust the fuzzy logic system to consider an ECG waveform with the given parameters as normal, we can tweak the membership functions like this. Positive peaks, asterisk, too few, keep current from 0 to around 2. Normal, adjust this range to include 3 as a strong member, so maybe from 2 to 4. Too many, adjust this range to start higher than 4. Negative peaks. Too few, keep current from 0 to around 0 0.5. Normal, adjust this range to include 1 as a strong member, so maybe from 0 0.5 to 1.5. Too many, adjust this range to start higher than 1.5. Amplitude. Low, keep current from 0 to around 0 0.1. Medium, broaden this to include 0 0.58 as a strong member, so maybe adjust to 0 0.1 to 0 0.7. High, adjust to start around 0 0.7. Low, maybe 0 to 0 0.3. Normal, broaden this range to strongly include 0 0.416, so perhaps 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. High, adjust to start around 0 0.7. Short, keep current from 0 to around 0 0.2. Normal, adjust this to include 0 0.3 as a strong member, so maybe 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. Long, adjust this range to start higher than 0 0.4. After making these adjustments, you'll want to validate the new setup by testing it with a variety of known ECG waveforms to ensure that it still correctly identifies abnormal patterns when they are present. You should also consider consulting with domain experts to validate the clinical relevance of these ranges. Based on the guidelines we discussed, here is how you could modify the fuzzy logic definitions in your Python code to potentially classify a normal ECG waveform with your specified values as normal. Make sure to test the updated system thoroughly to ensure that it behaves as expected across a range of input values. This is a starting point, and fine-tuning may be required to achieve the desired specificity and sensitivity. You actually might be in business. It's now uh, not making any mistakes. You did one uh, false alarm, but that's pretty much it. It's not uh, detecting the normal ECG waveform as abnormal, which is good. But we kind of faked it. We told the uh, uh, GPT-4 to adjust the membership functions to to actually make sure that the specific abnormal ECG waveform that we have does not uh, would not be labeled as uh, abnormal so will be always labeled as normal so it adjusted the membership functions obviously the question is how well will it work once we add the more uh, waveforms that's what we want to see and also well currently already as it is we can uh, see how oops that's me making yeah so i'll start making mistakes the bot will be winning and this is the no noise uh, scenario they can start adding some noise see what happens the hypothesis obviously will be that uh, the robot will start uh, making mistakes as you increase the noise level. Um, I can't compete with it already, so obviously it does the same task as uh, I am. It gets the raw uh, waveform values, it doesn't have the labels, and it's able to classify correctly. There's one error or something somewhere. We'll check the log, the terminal in a sec. This is it. I can't do it anymore. At around the, I think I can push to 1000 a score, but the bot will just uh, uh, will keep uh, going correctly forever. No breaks, no food, no pay. It just goes. Well, it just pay for electricity, right? But how much humans gobble up electricity anyway i'm i'm dansky i can't do it anymore the bot will keep going and obviously it doesn't care about speed as well it uh, does the uh, decision instantaneously oops and i'm making mistakes already yeah maybe i can if i really push it i can get to a thousand and it will be really hard for me to keep it there it's the other thing so it's the long longer term uh, performance that will suffer if i keep uh, doing the task because if i stop clicking i think the 
pretty sure the score will start uh, going uh, down. So I'm making a lot of uh, misses already because well, it's too fast for me and the bot is going strong. And uh, in our case, uh, in this uh, session, the GPT acted as a cardiologist. Well, fake, obviously fake cardiologist. Yeah, it did provide disclaimers. You can, uh, you know, see prior. And uh, was able to tune up the parameters for the algorithm to, to do the classification properly. So I don't know where that uh, one false alarm came from. Ah, I'm pretty sure it came uh, from uh, where we had the noise in the signal. Uh, because the default option when you load the page, uh, there is noise uh, introduced. Yes, yeah, so it will be interesting to see now what uh, will happen once we start introducing noise to the system. So we just introduce just a tiny bit. Uh, yeah, another false alarm. Yeah, I'm not sure which one is it uh, not uh, doing correctly, but yes, there's essentially too many positive peaks, so it's uh, messing up the numbers. There's no filter at the moment, there, was, uh, there would be probably a simple filter would uh, solve this. I didn't want to filter um, so that the human and the bot essentially look at the same waveform, so the bot doesn't have any unfair advantage. Yeah, so now it's actually uh, classifying everything as abnormal, so including the normal waveform, that's why the false alarm rate uh, going up. We have what if we have just the tiniest amount of uh, noise? No, it still gets uh, triggered somehow. Why? Yeah, this is where it starts uh, picking up uh, errors. So that's not great. Anyway, we'll continue next time. See you in a bit. Hey, can you summarize what we did today? and say bye-bye to the viewers politely. Yep. Hey, we've tackled a complex task of fine-tuning a fuzzy logic system to analyze ECG waveforms. We adjusted membership functions specifically to ensure a particular normal ECG waveform wouldn't be misclassified as abnormal. This approach helped reduce false alarms significantly in a noise-free environment, which is a great start. We also touched on the potential for the system's performance as we introduce noise and more varied data, hypothesizing that while a human might struggle with increased noise levels, the bot could potentially maintain high accuracy due to its consistent, tireless analytical capability. It's a wrap for today's session. We've made solid progress, and it's exciting to think about the potential of this system as it gets exposed to more data and scenarios. Goodbye for now, and take care.